The following program is sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network. Doug, great to have you on Building Wisconsin, and I am so excited to be back at my favorite location in Northeast Wisconsin, and that's the welding shop at UA Local 400. Well, we're thrilled to have you here and teach you a little bit about straight line fabrication. Yes, I understand it. That's a fascinating field, and this is the epicenter, not only in Wisconsin, but throughout North America and beyond for straight line fabrication, right? That's right. Within the United Association, we are the only straight line fabricator apprenticeship in the entire country. Well, I can't wait to learn more about it. And as I look around the shop, normally it's filled with apprentices and journey workers practicing their trade, but it's kind of neat to walk into one when it's empty to see the equipment that they're learning on. Yeah, this machine in particular is the Miller Pipeworks 400. You notice the name 400. We work together with Miller. They're a great advocate of Local 400 and this entire fabrication program. Are they a local company? They are. They're based right out of Appleton and uh, they helped develop this for us. Tell me a little bit more about this straight line fabrication, what we're going to see on today's show. What we do is we specialize training apprentices for shop environment for global work. They're welding, they're fitting, they're grinding, prepping specifically in a shop environment. So that's what straight line fabrication is. They're working in a controlled environment at these signatory contractors? That's right. They always have a roof over their head. They have the heat in the cold Wisconsin winters and it's centered on welding. Yeah, and I gotta believe all these different items that they're manufacturing, they're different. Each one is really customized to the project globally, you said? We could be doing clean rooms at a chip plant. We could be working on uh, biodiesel plants. We could be doing diesel fuel. So yeah, there's just so many variations of what our fabrication shops work on. So do you have to be a specialized high-end welder to get into this field? You do not. You're going to have to know the basics of welding. You're going to have to know the code of welding, but, but we have the fit benches that, that our fabrication program also teaches. Oh, cool. So if I'm not a real high-end specialized welder, I can still get into this apprenticeship. That's right. And then as you get into the program, you can develop one way or the other. Okay, awesome. Now what happens if I am a high-end welder? I'm not part of the union right now, but I'm interested in coming in. Is there any acceleration? Because if I put in five, ten years and I become a good welder, you know, I'd like to be rewarded for that. Without a doubt, we have what we call a training program. What we do is we bring you in with our full-time instructor and our full-time welding coordinator. You do a couple different types of welding, uh -huh. and then depending on your experience and your skill level, we uh, slot you into that training program. Oh, get out of here. So, I mean, it might not be a five-year apprenticeship then if I'm joining because of my talents? That's right. Typically, it's a two to three year program. You're slated in at 70 to 90% of what our current journeyman rate is. And then you complete classes and tune up your skills to where we need them to be, to be in that fabrication shop. And yeah, you're rolling. Well, I know one thing I've learned in doing all these Building Wisconsin shows, sky's the limit when you're talking about a great career, right? Correct. And if you are one that's going to go through the apprenticeship, I mean, really, you go through a five year, we like to say a college because you're going through for five years, you're coming out of this making about $100,000 to $120,000 a year with your pension, and you got no student loans at all. Wow, it doesn't get any better than that. Well, great having you on. I can't wait to see you on another show right now. I'm anxious to go out to some of your signatory contractors, learn more about this straight line fabrication. Sounds great, thank you.
Well, Dan, thanks for coming on Building Wisconsin. And I gotta tell you, when I think of straight line pipe fabrication, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, look at the flange on this. This is huge. Yeah, Stu, it, hey, it's great to have you here at Team Ministries. A uh, great example of a pipe spool here. Here at Team Ministries, we, we have 750,000 square feet. Wow! Six different bays. This is just one of our bays here. 44 acre campus that you're on right now. And then also we have another facility down in Texas. Wow, so you guys are a major player when it comes to straight line pipe fabrication and vessel fabrication. And when we say straight line, that means that you don't do the install, you do the fabrication in a controlled environment. That's correct. So we're bringing in pipe spools here. We're welding it in a controlled environment. Safety is 100 times better than out in the field. The quality is 100 times better. And the, just the sheer look and the feel of the product looks better. You know, you use the term pipe spool. What exactly is a pipe spool to the viewer out there? So a pipe spool is anything size and configuration that fits on a truck and we can ship it to site. And so your projects that you're working on might be comprised of several different spools and those spools are everything that you're fabricating here. They might have a flange on the end. They might be really intricate and have a whole bunch. Yeah. But as I understand it, a lot of it revolves around the quality of the welds and those are just absolutely spectacular. Yeah, that's correct. One of the biggest thing our customers focus on is quality, safety, and on-time delivery. So we're building these pipe spools Normal projects run anywhere from maybe 10 pipe spools all the way up to 100,000 pipe spools. Wow, that is a lot. And what are the different industries that these pipe spools are used in? We run the gamut. Uh, we've done it for pulp and paper, brewery, oil refinery, power, renewable diesel, just about everything. If you can weld it, we've done it. And so I bet it's fair to say you guys are a worldwide company. You're not just building for northeast Wisconsin. Yeah, actually I would say 95% of our product goes outside Wisconsin. Sure, so and I know off camera you were saying you're doing some, some stuff or you have done some stuff for the oil sands up in Alberta, across the United States and even over in Australia. Yep, we have a project coming up uh, in a few weeks here. We're going to be shipping to Australia. Uh, right now this project is going to California. We have another one going to Florida. We have one going to Texas. So. Just sure. about anywhere you can think of, we'll ship to. And you know, to me, working in an environment like this, this would be awesome for a welder. I mean, but you have to be super specialized and that's gotta speak volumes to the partnership you have with Local 400 who does the training. Yeah, the quality and the training, uh, we put together a five-year fabricator program with Local 400. They've been great to work with and we've actually specialized in uh, pipe fabrication. The welding, highly critical. A lot of it's 100% x-ray. And I, I would argue we have some of the best welders in the world right here in this facility. Well, that's awesome. I appreciate you coming on right now. I want to learn more about those best welders in the industry as I catch up with your shop steward, Tony. All right, appreciate it, Stu. Tony, thanks for coming on Building Wisconsin and walking through your shop here. I'm just amazed at how clean it is. It's awesome to see all the workers with smiles on their faces. They take a lot of pride in what oh, they're yeah, doing. They do. Well, you know, I wanted to catch up with you because I would like you to walk through the process for building these pipe spools. All right, so what'll happen is the pipe will get cut to size and then the prints, they come to the fit bench here where they break down the prints and send out the welds as refits to make it as easy for the welder as they can. And then at the end, it all comes back together to be a final spool and it gets sent down the line. Okay, so each of these stations we see here are, you said, refits, and really they're components to the finished product, Correct. right? Yep. And that finished product, in your case, is a spool, yep. but what Dan was saying is those spools, there could be could be five, 10, or hundreds of them yep. on a project. Yeah, they all go together. That's why we have really tight tolerances, so. And when you talk about those tight tolerances, I mean, I gotta believe these guys really take pride in that. Oh, and their training is second to none. Yeah, right? absolutely. So a lot of these journey worker welders that I see here, they're just that, they're journey workers. They've got many years experience oh, yeah. before just walking in here and doing this high-tech yeah, welding. Nick here's probably been here about 15 years. Wow. 
Now, what's going on over at this station? Well, this is another fit-up bench. You can see the pipe's a little bit bigger. Um, it's still pretty small for some of the stuff we work with. He's just getting everything true and square and to size for the welder right now. So he's not actually doing the welding, he's kind of tacking it? He's just it. tacking. He's getting everything fit, making sure it's to size, making sure everything's square so that when it comes back to get put on the next one, everything butts up real nice. That's got to be among many benefits, one of the most important ones of working in a controlled environment. Right. I mean, do you find that the guys really like it, especially on a cold winter day? They know it's going to be 68, 72 degrees in Yes, that's also nice as a set schedule. You know when you're coming in, you know when you're coming home. Or when you're in the field, you don't know when you're coming home a lot of the time. Do you guys have a continual need for experienced welders coming in and joining your crew? Absolutely. What will happen is they'll come in as metal trades, usually running the saws and grinding and stuff like that. Sure. They'll work their way to an apprenticeship by practicing welding at the hall. Then they get their apprenticeships, then they'll become journeymen when they complete it. Sounds like a great career. Oh, yeah, and you get paid to go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, is there another one down the road here? Because I see a lot of welding boots. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of them. Remember I showed you the fit bench over by Jesse, so what he does is he gets them fit up for the welder, so everything's got to be lined up just perfect so the welder can make a quality weld. And these gaps in here, those have to be very precise, right? Well, yep. You don't want too much or you'll get too much weld in there, and you don't want too little or it'll suck tight on you. And now I believe that Scott over there, I've seen yeah. him out at 400 actually training. So what's he working on right now? Right now he's working on a stainless steel TIG weld. So they'll purge the inside with argon and then they TIG weld the roots in and then continue to finish it out. Now that's an awesome apparatus that he's using yeah. that's actually turning it for him. Yeah, we make them here. Get out of here. Yeah. So you make them for like other companies in oh, the yeah. welding industry? We sell them and we obviously have enough of them around here that we use them a lot. Oh my God. Well, what a great way to design a piece of equipment that helps the industry. It's the workers on the ground, right? Oh, right. Absolutely. They make it able to spin everything, which makes it real easy on the welder. And again, that plays into safety because, I mean, this is a lot of heavy equipment. Yeah. I could see somebody tweaking their back here, but I know Dan mentioned how important safety is. Yeah, team's really high on safety. We do morning stretches every day. They do weekly inspection reports that each person does about their area. They even have an on-site chiropractor. Like you said, if you tweak your back or something, you can go to him and they want you to really go home the way you came. Well, that's awesome to hear. Okay, so once they're welded, what happens to these pieces? They'll go down the line and either they'll go out and get blasted and painted in our blast and paint building, if that's what the customer wants. Stainless usually doesn't get painted, so that'll just probably get loaded on a rack down that we have at the end. Then they can pick up the whole rack and put it on a semi. Trailer. And it's shipped to your clients, which might be anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. <laughs> well, I wish we had more time to spend with you, Tony, but it's been awesome learning how spools are made. Thanks for coming on Building Wisconsin. Thank you. Well, Greg, thanks for coming on Building Wisconsin. I'm anxious to learn more about your company, Enterpipe. And as I'm looking here, let's start out here in this bay where you're welding up some carbon steel. We are, and thank you for, for coming here to learn more about our company. This is carbon steel pipe fabrication. Um, Enterpipe is a straight line pipe fabrication shop. It works out a local 400. And in addition to the carbon steel, we also do stainless steel, alloys. Really, if it's weldable, we can do it. And so far on today's show, what I've learned is a straight line fabrication facility is just that. You don't do the install, you do the fabricating. And a lot of these products that you're making go well beyond Wisconsin. That's correct. We are a straight line fabricator, which means that we only fabricate products here. We ship them out to sites throughout North America and they're installed by other contractors. Okay. And again, this is carbon steel and I'm looking 
here, this weld hasn't been done, it's been tacked, but I am amazed at the tolerances. How important are those tolerances when you're talking about this type of welding? Yeah, the tolerance that we work to are critical for our customers. Uh, most of the products that we're doing in this facility right now, tied to renewable energy, have tolerances that are well less than half industry standards. And with the wow. skill level and the quality of the workforce that we have in Local 400 here, we're able to deliver that every time. Wow, because again, these products that you're making it, these plumbing spools, they're really pieces to a puzzle when they get out on site and you can't say, well, we're putting it up, it's within a quarter inch, that's fine. I mean, it's far tighter than that. In this application, that's correct. It has to be perfect, it has to be plug and play, it has to fit. So renewable energies, I mean, is that a growing field for your company? Renewable energies is the biggest growth area that we have in our company right now. Our company has grown by as much as four times in the last year, wow. mostly attributable to the renewable energy market. Holy cow, so that to me means that you're busy. There must be lots of opportunity for talented individuals to start a career here if they wanted to. Absolutely, whether you're coming out of high school and trying to figure out what you want to do, you like working with your hands, whether you're an experienced welder, wherever you're at in your life, if you like to work, you like to build stuff, this is a great opportunity for you. Well, Greg, sounds like the future is bright for your company and any individual that wants a rewarding career. Appreciate you coming on Building Wisconsin and introducing us to Enterprise. My pleasure. Thanks for coming on Building Wisconsin, Chad. I was just talking to Greg, learning about the carbon steel, the, the stainless welds that are going on here. What's going on in this booth? Looks like some stainless. Yep, here we have Dusty. He's TIG welding out a stainless joint on a piece of, of our stainless pipe fabrication. Here you're getting a good view at TIG welding in itself, along with turntable positioning it for him and rotating it and making his job easier. Okay, so tradesperson like Dusty, how long does it take to get to be that skilled to be able to weld this type of pipe? The time can vary it, but um, a lot of times two or three years, maybe four. That quickly? It can really? be, yep, depending on your skill set. And so if you're a hard worker and you're a good learner, quick learner, you can get in two, three years to be doing this type of high-tech welding. I mean, because as Greg mentioned, a lot of this is x-ray. It takes a lot of skill to be an x-ray welder, and you get all your education with Local 400, and you get contractors like Enterpipe that need that skill set to meet the customer's demands. So what is your role here? I'm the union steward here at Enterpipe, so I work with the employees and the contractor when there's needs between them. Um, and then I'm also a journeyman welder myself, located at Enterpipe's New London facility. Okay, so how many years have you been a welder? I've been in the trade with Local 400 for 15 years, wow. and I'm new with Enterpipe this summer, a little over wow. six months. Awesome. Are you happy with your career choice? Yeah, you got a roof over your head. Um, you know, we got winter coming up here, so you're, you're in a warm facility. You got fresh air, state of the art equipment. And as you can see, dusty welding right here. He's moving that piece with the touch of his foot and he's in a comfortable position and he can put out that quality weld. And it sounds, according to Greg, there's lots of opportunity out there for somebody considering getting into the trade. A lot of contractors, especially Enterpite right now, are growing. They're looking for young guys and women to get into the trade, cutting and grinding, and then eventually getting their apprenticeship and becoming a welder like Dusty. Yeah, well, if I'm making a career choice to become a straight line fabricator, there's some training involved, right? And 400 offers all that. You serve your apprenticeship with 400, you earn as you learn. Um, you go to school a couple nights a week and then every other Friday for your day of school and while getting paid. Sure, and it's not just welding. I mean, there's lots of aspects, especially with safety at the forefront. We do a lot of rigging, as you can see in this trade. Each booth has a jib crane and we have big overhead cranes. So we take rigging classes and other OSHA safety classes uh, that provide us with the uh, proper techniques to, to stay safe. Sure. So if I'm a viewer out there looking to get into this career, what's your advice for somebody? Uh, be willing to work hard and, and be willing to learn, and that's really all it takes. I can hear it in your voice. Straight line pipe and vessel fabrication is where it's at. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you coming on Building Wisconsin. I'll let you get back to work, and I'll see you down the road. Thanks. Take care.
Great to see you, Tony. Thank you so much for coming on Building Wisconsin. Wow, this facility is amazing. So many different bays, and look at the size of the pipe the guys are working on. Thanks for having us, Stu. This is some 32-inch carbon steel half wall. This pipe is being manufactured for a refinery in the Midwest here. Uh, should be shipping through fabrication to a local paint shop and installed in the refinery within the next few weeks. Is this pretty typical of the projects that you're working on? I mean, this, this looks huge to me. I don't think a lot of people offer 80-foot pipe spools. Uh, we've got a, a loading dock that has us set up specifically to ship 80-foot spools to job sites across the lower 48, even into Canada. So by increasing the size, we're reducing the amount of welding being done in the field and taking a lot of that work and fabricate it in a controlled environment. Sure, and that's the name of the game. Yep. Fabricating in a controlled environment. Exactly. Don't minimize that. And I'm curious, on today's show, I've seen such high talented welders in action. Why do you think Northeast Wisconsin became the epicenter of straight line pipe and vessel fabrication? It's a great question. You know, I've, I've been in business for about 25 years. When I first started, a lot of the business kind of was driven off the Paper Valley, right? This is yep. the Fox River area, the Paper Valley. A lot of the guys that came here cut their teeth and got going on a lot of the stainless steel welding for a lot of the local paper mills. So it's been a hub or an epicenter here. And throughout the country, this is one of the larger premier areas for doing pipe fabrication and welding. Yeah, great place to live. And as the paper industry has changed and some of it's moved away, there's a calling for straight line pipe and vessel fabrication and you guys just filled that void i mean came right in and it sounds like it's continuing to evolve and get even higher demand right oh yeah we're expecting growth into next year finding qualified welders and attracting talent to the industry is a big goal for the upcoming years and i gotta believe the partnership you have with local 400 that's really key to your success as well sure the sales side of thing you need the demand but without the highly skilled workforce that they train and provide you i mean it'd be pretty tough for sure. All of our welders here are drawn from the local 400. They're all gone through the apprenticeship program. They've been trained on certain welding processes, procedures, ASME qualified, meeting the specific project requirements. We pride ourselves on fabrication to meet any industry's needs for any of our base customers. Well, Tony, it's been great talking to you, albeit very short. Hopefully in the future, we can do an entire episode on piping systems. Right now, I'm gonna go catch up with Jason, who's actually an instructor with 400 and happens to work here, to see what his role is in the process. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much for coming on Building Wisconsin, Jason. It's a pleasure to meet you. And as I understand it, you're affectionately known as Smiley. So yep. I'm just gonna call you Smiley. So Smiley, I understand that you're an instructor with 400, yet you work out here at Piping System. Yeah, the neat thing about an apprenticeship is a lot of your instructors, we're working right next to the apprentices while they're going through their apprenticeship. So if they have a question at work, they can come and ask me and they can ask us during sure. class, so that's a huge advantage of an apprenticeship of any type. Yeah, the mentorship is second to none, and really that's the key to the success, right? Because you're gleaning knowledge if you're an apprentice, otherwise as a mentor, you're actually providing the knowledge and teaching them. Since you're an instructor, talk about a piece of equipment that somebody might not know. I mean, how would you go about teaching them how to use this piece? So this is a pretty unique piece of equipment right here. This is called submerged arc welding versus what most people think of welding they see an arc flash and that type of thing sure. so this granular powder is flux and underneath that powder is the arc so as that metal creates heat and is melting it melts the flux and it shields the weld from the oxygen and you get a really nice looking weld Holy smokes, that is really cool. So what's the big advantage to a piece of equipment like this? This is 32 inch pipe, half inch wall. It's gonna take Rob about two and a half hours to make this weld. Okay. Now if you were out in the field making this weld, it would probably take two guys a whole day. Really? And of course, out in the field, the pipe probably wouldn't be rotating. And earlier, Tony was saying that the way to get a good weld is to have it rotating. Right. You know, one of the big advantages of prefabrication is we have a controlled environment in here. We have the equipment to handle this big heavy pipe, to roll it, turn it, and 
If you imagine having to make all those welds in the field, there's just a huge labor savings. So how are the welders taught to use a piece of equipment like this? At the local 400 training center, we actually have one of these submerged arc welding machines. So if you want to learn how to do this, you can take a class, Matt's their full-time teaching, he'll teach you how to do it, you'll be able to get the certification from the hall, and now you can go to the job site and do this. You must be happy with your career choice. I'm definitely happy with my career choice. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made. The opportunities in the pipe trades are endless. You can yeah. go wherever you want to go, do whatever you want to do. Well, it's because of talented individuals like yourself, like all the people that work here and at the other fab shops, that it's no wonder Northeast Wisconsin has become the epicenter of straight line pipe and vessel fabrication. And I used to say in the Midwest, heck, it's worldwide. I mean, you look around, I would venture to guess these are the most talented welders out there. We have some extremely talented welders right here in northeastern Wisconsin. And as an apprentice, you're going to be learning from the best. Well, thank you very much. I'll let you get back to work. Thanks a lot. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. The preceding program was sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network.